Greetings everyone, it's moi, Ivera Deshuy, your realtor with the Golden Keys. Today I'd like to talk to everyone concerning um, one of the disclosure forms that we as agents have to give you. The law says that upon showing, meeting that first time to show your property, that we are supposed to go over this form with you that day. So I'd like to take um, this time to adhere to social distancing and also explain this form. I've been getting a lot of requests um, in regards to a couple of my properties and I'm having to stop and send this form. So I thought the best thing to do is um, use this modern day technology to explain it. I'm one of those agents that's a little bit anal about explaining everything because with all your um, that getting, you have to get understanding and you need to know and fully understand what it is that you're signing. And so I'm a little anal with it and I want to always explain it. So as opposed to explaining to everyone individually, I'm just going to do uh, this video and then I'll be sending this over to clients and potential clients. So I'm going to, here we go. Here's my take on this form. Understanding whom agents represent. So as an agent, we have to disclose uh, agency relationship because years ago, uh, you would go to an open house and you, you would tour it. And if you didn't select that house, the agent that hosted the open house um, would possibly uh, suggest some other properties. And then you go take a look at those properties. You would go to work on Monday and you would say, you know, my agent and I looked at a bunch of properties. Well, in all actuality, it wasn't your agent because these were properties that were part of his listing pool. Um, these were agents in which he was listed as the listing agent. So the law started to uh, decide that we needed to disclose who represents who. So this form is very much needful. So we're going to go down the, for the for, through the form a little quickly. So seller's agent, that's very self-explanatory. It means that that agent, the listing agent, fiduciary responsibility is solely to the seller. That means their confidentiality, their obedience, their loyalty, and their disclosure is solely for the um, seller. So that's why it's important whenever you're taking a look at a property um, and you're speaking with the listing agent, it's great to have agency representation, someone that is there that will represent your interest because sometimes, um, depending on what you uh, say or don't say, it may affect your negotiating power. Um, your stance. So that's the seller's agent. The listing agent is the seller's agent. Then there's what's called a cooperating agent. A cooperating agent is basically um, uh, an agent you call and said, hey, I saw this listing. Um, you might be on Zillow and you've, you've all seen it before. Um, and you'll see that there's the property and it shows the listing agent. And then underneath of it, it has maybe three other agents that it may suggest that you can call. And um, so let's say you call one of those agents. You're like, look, I, I like this house. Um, I wanna take a look at it and make an offer right away. And you really don't wanna do too much talking. You just wanna get your offer in right away and you ask them to do it. Um, a cooperating agent is an agent that would provide a ministerial duty for you, the duty of writing the contract, but he or she does not represent you. In all actuality, the cooperating agent's fiduciary responsibility is solely still to the uh, owner, the seller, or the landlord. This form is used interchangeably for sellers and landlords and for tenants and buyers. So that's the cooperating agent. And then there was what was called a presumed buyer's agent at one time. A presumed buyer's agent is an agent that takes you out to show you the property. It is presumed, but there's no written agreement. At the time you want to start writing an offer, um, at that point, you will have to make a decision how that agent is going to represent you. Um, this one is a little tricky. It says a presumed buyer's agent may not make or prepare an offer or negotiate a sale for the buyer. The presumed agent cannot negotiate a sale for you. The buyer does not have an obligation to pay anything to a presumed agent. So this agent, if for any for any reason, the buyer does not want the agent to represent him or her as a presumed agent, either initially or at any time, the buyer can decline or terminate a presumed agency relationship, a relationship simply by saying so.
So this this type of agency relationship, this is not binding at all by, on either side, by the on the agent side, nor on the buyer or the tenant side. So that's a presumed agent. Then there's what's called a dual agent. So a dual agent is where the um, brokerage has the tenant and an agent representing the landlord or it has the listing and also the buyer all under the same umbrella. So in this type of a situation, we just can't assume that it's okay to, uh, to write up the offer. We have to have permission by both parties. And um, the seller has to say that, okay, they're fine with us working with uh, a, a buyer under the same brokerage agreement. So he or she would have to sign off and guess what? the seller or the, the buyer or the tenant also has to um, sign off saying that they agree to work under the umbrella of the same brokerage. So this is something that's another form. We'll talk about that at another time. It's called consent for dual agency. And this form also allows, let's say, for instance, you give me a call and you say, Yvette, I need to see this property. And I'm just like, I'm right on it. And um, we go take a look at this property. We've gone over this, but when we, I, I'm looking at it and I notice that another agent in my office has the listing, or it may in fact be my listing. In this case, this is where we would initiate the consent for dual agency because I cannot show you that property unless the seller has signed a consent for dual agency and you too will also have to sign the consent for dual agency. So that's a dual agent when them, uh, then there's a, a consent for dual agency within a team. So you sometimes in the brokerage, you have a team and there may be five people on the team. So perhaps one member has the, the listing and the other member of the team has found the buyer for the property. In this case, this is another great scenario of when you would initiate this. It needs to be signed by both parties and all parties. Um, so that's that one. And then the next one, which would be the last form of agency relationship, would be an exclusive buyer's um, agency or buyer's agent. In a buyer's agency, if that agent represents you. Their fiduciary responsibility is solely to you. So their confidentiality, their obedience within the confines of the law, their loyalty and their disclosure is solely to you. So he or she is going to negotiate and facilitate the transaction in your favor. So they're going to be looking out for you because they represent you. So this form, if you um, decide to have a buyer's agent or exclusive buyer agency representation, then it will be followed by another form, which would be the exclusive buyer agreement form. So with a buyer agency comes the agreement form. And that agreement form spells out the, the agreement between the buyer and the tenant and, or, and the brokerage agreement and the agent as well. Um, in some cases, there may be a commission, an additional commission that the brokerage will call, charge you. Um, there may be a fee um, tied into that. It um, will stipulate when it starts, when it ends. It's going to stipulate how and that agency relationship is terminated. Um, and so a couple other things um, it will spell out. So that will uh, um, accompany the, uh, once you've decided that you want the agent to represent you as a buyer's agent or a tenant's agent, this is a form that will be coupled along with that. So I hope um, this helped you understanding um, how agency relationship works. Uh, and I, I hope it shed a little bit of light on that for you. And so this is a video that I will be sending out uh, to share with everyone explaining it. Um, in addition to getting the video, at some point, you are also going to receive from me, um, you're going to get the form as well. So you've already, the video would have explained it. You'll need to sign the form. So you will review it. You would select the type of represent representation that you desire, and then you would sign it and send it back. And we are using e-forms to do this. So um, that's the beauty of some of this modern day technology. 
So guys, I hope that I was able to, again, shed a little bit of light, bring some understanding and understanding uh, to how agency relationship works. So thank you. Till next time, have a great day. Stay safe. Mwah.